I am not planning on doing anything with these pieces here. I'm going to just leave them the way they are, and put them on the little rotating blocks and that's that. However, all of these other pieces, they all have to be nipped. And uh, some of them are not going to be easy to nip. And I'm just sort of wondering if, if there's some way I could maybe, I don't know, maybe utilize this little hole to hold them in place. I don't know, maybe that hole is, is too small for these things to fit down into. But we'll give it a try and see what happens. Yes. No, is that going to actually help me? Well, I thought at the time, I thought it would be kind of handy to have it held in place, but now I'm realizing that I'm going to want to, uh, you know, get in here with the cutters. Okay, an afterthought here. How would it be if the hole, instead of being back here, was right on the edge? like that so that this this edge here would be actually hanging over the edge I don't know if I can drill drill that close or not well actually I, I probably can you know I've done I've done a lot of stuff like that before I don't see why I can't do it again Well, we got a little bit of wobble here. I know that uh, the idea is that you're supposed to supposed to go fast with small bits and slow with big ones, and but I like to go nice and slow. That's the way I've always done it with something like this. Not not that I haven't, you know, had the the thing going as fast as it can go when I'm making a whole bunch of little holes. I have done that at the top speed, like 36 or whatever thousand RPM. And, and you know I have I have done it with small bits, but in a case like this, I like to go nice and slow, take my time, see what's happening, and uh, nothing's going to jump out of place on me. That's that's the way I do it. So let's just see what happens here. Try and get as close to the edge as we can. I'll, I'll move you in. Oh, and one more thing, I'm drilling a hole just slightly bigger than this this other one right here um, just slightly now where's my other glasses okay and if the bit you know blows out the side a little after we've gone down a quarter of an inch or maybe even less is okay as long as it's uh, right on the the hole is right on the edge to start Now that's actually deep enough, but is it close enough to the edge? Maybe I should try another one and try and get even closer to the edge. I'll just move back a little bit this way. Take a needle and make a pilot hole. 
This second hole I drilled will probably be the best one, even though it looks like it's coming out the side. But I think for what I want, if I can get one here. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put on the macro lens for you. Okay, now my thinking here is that because this is too this is too small to hold in my in my fingers, but if I can hold it down like like this, um, now I'm trying really hard not to bump it out of your field of view here. Okay, now, I didn't go as close as I'd wanted there. Maybe because the, the nipper was not at the right angle. I don't know if I can improve on this. Or if I'm going to just cut it worse. Okay, I think maybe what I should do is stop while I'm, while I'm ahead here. I notice I'm starting to cut on the side. So if I can hold it like that, or something to hold it down with. This is too blunt. That that might work. Okay. This, this looks really bad, doesn't it? But that's because you're seeing it so incredibly close. From from my perspective, and I'm looking at it with my magnifying hood on, it, it doesn't look too bad. I can envision when when this is painted and sitting on the deck, it is actually going to look, <clears throat> excuse me, perfectly round. Now, once again, for perspective, can I get it to stay on there? Now, once again, when I was editing out those last few scenes that we just saw, I saw what part of my problem was like and I was, I was wondering why is it that I was having such a hard time when I was trying to come down on the on the part and nip it off on the side then I realized this is this is just all wrong I should be able to come in from this side except that this piece is here and uh, <laughs> it, it's already almost sawed off this is a piece of scrap from during the workshop so uh, Uh, 
those of you who uh, were watching the pen turning series, you might remember this from the uh, the woodpecker pen or whatever I called it in Kelowna. And I used this saw to saw off that branch. <laughs> I wish I could turn the clock back to when I did that. Anyway, let's see if I can just cut this off here with uh, cutting my green cloth. I don't care about the sawdust. I got a vacuum cleaner right behind me. This does, this does not, doesn't have to be pretty, and it, it may not work. I am presently back at the same location where I found the little piece of wood in which I made the pen from the point. And in other words, I'm back on that same point again. This wood off trees. In other words, something that should be pruned off anyway. This saw is, is really good, except that it's not good for something like this. You're going to see it in the upper right hand corner here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enhance the picture here, and uh, right now it's a little too dark, but I'm going to enhance it, and you're going to actually be able to see the lesser Okanagan saw build woodpecker at work, and exactly what it does. Well, needless to say, I just couldn't leave this wood just laying there at the base of the tree after the bird sawed it off. So uh, I broke it up, sort of, so that I can, you know, easily take it back to Winnipeg. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. You don't suppose it might make a good pen, do you? Anyway, yeah. We'll see how it goes when I get back to Winnipeg. Okay, now, how can I, okay, I'm going to want to put, drop it in like this, and I'm going to want to be able to come with my, with my nippers along the side, and I can use this as sort of like a bevel, and, and just get the, get it just exactly right. I'll, I'll just reposition everything here. Okay. Let's put on another one here. Now, the idea is I should be able to come at it at a different different angle here. Now once again I'm holding it awkwardly for myself so that the camera can see it, but uh, we'll, we'll reposition here. I'll put the macro lens on. Now the reason I have this clamped down like this is if I don't, I'm probably going to end up moving this and moving it even just a millimeter one way or the other will uh, <clears throat> take it in or out of the f focus or completely out of the field of view. Now I want to just see if I can't just come along right on the edge like that. There, you know, I think this one nipped off a lot better. 
and I'm not even going to try and, and uh, file that. Well, let's see if we can do another one. something better that I could hold this in with other than this uh, with this little uh, dowel because oh mind you it is going pretty good whoops was going good I'll do one more on camera, then I'll do the rest and get them over with. Wonder, could I hold that in with my finger? Let's try this. This will hold it flat. Okay. Yeah, this is going really good. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of them like that. All of the G4s and the G7s are done now. Uh, except for this one here. And I'm going to use that as a demonstrator to show you something. Now these ones here the uh, F24s they are uh, they have the sprue attached to the top something like uh, the windlasses did on the uh, for the winches Ooh, don't let that ping away on me now Let's see if we can get in this hole okay now you probably can't see it from way back there, but one side of this is kind of is kind of um, detailed. Let's see if I can turn it so it's towards you. Okay, well you you probably still can't see it. I'll I'll, I'll put the macro lens on. Okay, I'll turn it a little bit more towards you if I can. There. You can actually see where Trumpeter has gone to the effort there. Turn it a bit, maybe like that. Yeah, they've actually gone to the effort to make it look like there's some sort of grilling or grating or something like that in there. Okay, now. the fine now where's my brush now I know I could probably do the extra thin you know trick on the top there and it might be a little better but I don't want it to the extra thin to be running down into the yeah. Okay, let's see if we can do the other one.
all we have left now is the F6s and that one G4. Now these F6s, what I want to do is have them, let's take this one here. I guess I should really put the macro lens back on. Okay, now what I want to do is sort of roll it over like this so that this piece of sprue is sticking up and then bring the nipper in from the side and nip it off. I wonder, maybe I can hold it with my finger here. Is that possible? Yes. Okay. Okay, this is the last G4. Remember we had 10 G4s and 10 G7s and they all looked much the same? And what we were doing is we were taking and we were putting the, the uh, G4 into the hole and then twisting it around and nipping off the piece of sprue. But I was thinking afterwards, why could you not, or why could we not have cut off the sprue in a big chunk and then nipped off the G4 off of the sprue instead of the sprue off of the G4. Uh, I think that probably would have worked a lot better. You know, my grandfather, I can still hear him saying it. Too soon old, too late smart. Now I'm just wondering, is there enough sprue that we can just grab onto the piece of sprue and try this or is it going to go pinging off into oblivion maybe if I if I readjust everything here I'm gonna to have to take it off camera okay I do believe I've got it here now if we were to have come in with our nipper on the side whoops okay oh come on Ron Very carefully now. Yeah, I think we could have done that. And then just had the little pieces drop into, you know, their appropriate tin. Eventually. Okay, as near as I can tell, all of the parts for steps 13 and 14 on this page, they're nipped, trimmed, glued together, whatever they need. They're ready to glue on, except, like on, on the deck here, except that we've got to paint them. So uh, the plan now is to get them glued onto the center of rotating blocks, because I think that's probably going to be the easiest way to paint these small parts. Uh, and uh, yeah, that'll, but that's going to have to be tomorrow. Also tomorrow, Okay, well later on today I'm going to go down to the workshop and I'm going to find a piece of wood to glue on the side of the clothes peg so that we can fasten our CA bottle to it and we'll try that out tomorrow. Um, I kind of put it off. I guess I can take this out of here now. I, I had this uh, in here because I didn't want the glue to, you know, to glue the whole thing together if you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, yeah. So that's going to be tomorrow. 
Thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.